Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to give all praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh, Bashim, Yahushai, Bashim, Baruch HaKwadash. Double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of the great millstone who rule well. Peace, blessings, and salutations unto the for elect tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And uh, yeah, I can't believe I'm actually doing a lesson in which I'm going to agree <laughs> with this, this uh, one eye troll in uh, Charleston White. You know, he says a lot of outlandish, you know, left field shit. A lot of it is to, uh, you know, garnish attention and clout, you know, because he has a message that he wants to, you know, send to uh, his people. But, uh, you know, him being so ignorant and gets a kick out of, uh, you know, trolling people, you know, he does it in a, you know, a, a ignorant manner, you know, where he, you know, he just, you know, runs off at the mouth, you know, to piss people off. But, um, you know, once you get around the gimmicks, certain things that he does say, it actually be on point. Now, he's actually uh, speaking in the wake of uh, Takeoff's death. And uh, he's saying basically what, you know, we normally say, you know, which is according to the scriptures concerning death. All right. And, 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 you know, basically the fact that, you know, none of us control our own will. All right, he's going to basically prove, you know, with his talking points that nothing is of our own will. Everything is of the will of the Most High. There is no free will. Okay. And also when you die, you know, dying is actually a good thing. Most people in the world don't understand that, you know, the, the world, you know, they teach, you know, you only live one life, YOLO. So, you know, in their mind, you know, they're afraid of death. They don't think that there's anything after. They don't think there's an afterlife. They don't think that there's a, a, a transformation that, you know, you have to live again and live according to what you did in, in the body in your previous life. You know, that's what the world don't understand. But anyway, I'm going to let him speak and then um, I'm going to pause it at times and I'm going to actually uh, you know, bring scriptures into it. All right, because, uh, you know, what I, what I heard him say, you can definitely uh, prove in the scriptures that it's actually uh, the truth. So without further ado, let's uh, listen real quick. And so when I go to Miami, I fuck with Lil Miko a few times. When I'm in Atlanta, I fuck with him. Uh, so, uh, motherfucker said, man, what you, what, what you gonna say? Well, nigga, what I'm gonna say about something I don't know nothing about? So, just, just, just for all the people that don't know nothing about nothing, I, I want y'all to listen. Let me see, I wanna get some work for I. Yeah, yeah, I want y'all to listen to this, y'all. Yeah, yeah, I want y'all to listen to this. Oh. Uh, uh, I, I tell niggas all the time, especially kids, say, listen, little homie, uh, you don't get to pick who you born to. You don't get to pick your mother and father. Uh, whatever has happened to you as a kid is not your fault because you, you didn't ask to be here. You didn't ask to come to earth. Your mom and daddy produced you and made you, and so you was born in these conditions. You had no say-so over that. So, boom. So when it's time to die. Nigga, you ain't, if you ain't got no say-so on how you get here with life, you ain't got no say-so on how you leave her, right? So you don't get to pick how you born, and you don't get to choose how you die. Uh, what, what? And that's true. Just as you, you don't get to pick, you know, when you were born in the earth and who you're born to, you also don't pick how you're going to die and when you're going to die. All that is determined by the Heavenly Father himself. Uh, the Lord said, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. And nobody can, you know, no no, no one can escape out of his hand. All right. Uh, let's, let's get it real quick. This is Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 9. 
So there was nothing that could have been done to prevent, you know, dude from dying. Because a lot of people are talking about how oh, he, you know, he just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. He had nothing to do with the altercation. You know, we, he shouldn't have been the one to die and all this stuff. No, it was meant for him to go. It was his time. All right. Ecclesiastes 8 and verse 8. It says, there is no man that have power over the spirit to retain the spirit, neither have he power in the day of death. Because that day is already determined. All right. Every last one of us, is there's, there's a determination date for us to be born and there's a time for us to die. All right. It says, and there is no discharge in that war, neither shall wickedness Deliver those that are given to it. Let me get this in the other uh, NLT real quick. And it says, none of us can hold back our spirit from departing. None of us have the power to prevent the day of our death. There is no escaping that obligation, that dark battle. And in the face of death, wickedness will certainly not rescue the wicked. All right. And that's just what it is, you know, ever since what happened and what transpired transpired in the garden, you know, that's been, you know, the, the order over the earth, you know, ever since. All right. Let me get Ecclesiastes, uh, was it three? Ecclesiastes three. And one, it says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. You know, and I can just keep going down. There's a time for everything. But the point is, there's a time to be born and a time to die. All right. And uh, once we die, this is what happens. Uh, verse 16 it says it's like you uh, verse verse 20 it says all go into one place all are of the dust and all turn to dust again who know of the spirit of man that goeth upward and the spirit of beast that goeth downward to the earth alright that's how the cycle goes okay Let's go to uh matter of fact, let me go to uh this real quick. Let's go to Psalms one Psalms one oh four starting at the twenty ninth verse. And it says Thou hidest thy face, they are troubled, thou takest away their breath. They die and return to their dust. Thou sendest forth thy created. It's like you, thou sendest forth thy spirit. They are created and thou renewest the face of the earth. So, you know, the Lord will take away your breath and return it back to himself where it came from. And then he can take his spirit, part of his spirit, and send, you, send that down to the earth and have you created at any given time, man. Let me see about let me see what that say in the NLT. Yeah, it says, but if you turn away from them, they panic. When you take away they, their breath, they die and turn again to dust. When you give them your breath, life is created, and you renew the face of the earth. All right. So that's determined upon the Father of Spirits. All right. So he chooses. You know, when you live how, and, 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 you know, who you're going to be born to. All right. Let's go real quick to Isaiah 45 and verse 9. And it says, matter of fact, let me read this and let me read this in the NLT too. Isaiah 45 and 9. It says, what sorrow awaits those who argue with their creator? Does a clay 
pot argue with its maker? Does the clay dispute with the one who shapes it? Saying, stop, you're doing it wrong. Does the pot exclaim, how clumsy can you be? How terrible it would be if a newborn baby said to its father, why was I born? Or it said to its mother, why did you make me this way? This is what the Lord says, the Holy One of Israel and your creator. Do you question what I do for my children? Do you give me orders about the work of my hands? I'm the one who made the earth and created people to live on it. With my hands, I stretched out the heavens and all stars or at my command. You know, so you being a creation of the Most High, you, you ain't got nothing to say against your creator. He He made you. So you can't question him on, you know, how he does things with his creation, why. All right. You just simply exist because he exists. So you're up under his 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 will, whatever he has purpose for you. That's what you're subject to. Let's get uh, an apocrypha. Real quick. Go to Sirach 18. And when it says, He that liveth forever have created all things in general. The Lord only is righteous, and there is none other but He who governeth the world with the palm of His hand. And all things obey His will. All right? His will. Because we don't have our own will. For He is the King of all by His power, dividing holy things among them from profane. All right, everything is according to his will. And that's why it's wicked to boast that, you know, you're going to do something, you know, six months from now, you know, a year from now. All right. Such boasting is evil because you don't know when your time is going to come. All right. Just like you, you didn't determine the day that you were going to be born. You didn't know what hour, what time of the uh, day, what year. None of that. So the same thing ap uh, applies to death. James 4. And starting at 13, it says, Go to now, ye that say, tomorrow, to today or tomorrow, we will go into such a city and continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow. But what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then vanish it away. For that you ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But now you're, you, you rejoice in your boastings. All such rejoicing is evil. All right? Because that's, you know, that's the attitude of the wicked, the ungodly. All right, these devils, you know, they said, uh, you know, years, they got ob objectives. And agendas that they won't accomplish by a particular year, you know, because they really believe that their houses shall continue forever, their dwelling uh, places. But his his his, uh, his bounds is already determined. Let's get uh, Job fourteen and uh, is it five? Yeah, Job 14 and 5, it says, Seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee, thou hast appointed his bounds that he cannot pass. And I really, you know, that goes for everyone. You know? We all have been uh, set with, with bounds that we cannot pass. Let me see what the other translations say. And LT says, you have decided the length of our lives. You know how many months we will live. And we are not given a minute longer. All right. Uh, NIV, a person's days are determined. You have decreed the number of his months and have set limits he cannot exceed. All right. Same thing with, you know, the times to rule, rulership. The duration of, of, of time that a, a, a kingdom 
it's going to rain. The Lord already set that determination. He set the, the, the clock on it. And we're at the end of Esau's uh, time. All right. We're at the end of Esau's time and the beginning of Jacob that's going to follow. All right. So. Let me uh, let me go back and play a little more of this video. What matters is the dash. So your birth date and your death date, that's already set. The dash in the middle, you write that, right? So uh now the dash in the middle is still determined by the Lord. All right, you you're gonna fulfill whatever role the Lord got you uh fulfilling. Okay. Like it says in uh Proverbs, man's goings are of the Lord. How then can a man understand his own way? Okay. The Lord, he's he he who directs the steps of men. Let me get that real quick. Like he told the pro he told Prophet Jeremiah, you know, before I formed you in the belly, I already knew you and sanctified you and ordained you a prophet. I already knew what you were gonna do. So the Lord already determined that lot. He determined a lot of, of, of everyone. If you're going to be wicked, if you're going to be righteous, if you're going to be a teacher, a, a prophet, a servant, if you're going to be a, 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 a sellout, you know, the wicked, it's already determined. Jeremiah 10 and 23. And it says, O, o Lord, Yahweh, I know not the way. I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. Now, the Lord is who, 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 who does that. All right. It also says that, you know, basically what a man says. Let's get a Proverbs, was it 16? Proverbs 16 and 1, it says. The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. So our steps are directed by the Lord and even what's in our minds. All right, when we speak, that's all from uh, the Heavenly Father. So your whole life is already, you know, been, uh, you know, pre-written. Okay. It was pre-ordained. Oh, uh, nigga, when it's your time, it's your time. Oh, uh, so I had to remind myself as, as I'm sitting back, list everybody waiting on me to say something. I had to remind myself, nigga, uh, death ain't bad. Yeah, death is not a bad thing. Who, who, who done convinced us? Who done told us that death is a bad thing? The, the ungodly. Let's get that in our wisdom of Solomon, second chapter. The ungodly convince you that death is is <laughs> is a bad thing. This is uh, wisdom of Solomon two, and when it says, "For the ungodly say, reasoning within themselves, but not aright, our life is short and tedious, and in the death of man there is no remedy. Neither was there any man known to have returned from the grave." So they don't believe in you know resurrections. But we are born at all adventure, and we shall be hereafter as though we had never been. For the breath in our nostrils is as, a, as smoke and a little spark in the moving of our heart, which being extinguished, our body shall be turned into ashes, and our spirit shall vanish as the soft air. So you're just going to just, you know, vanish into nothing. You just going it's just nothingness after after uh you take your last breath. But that's not that's not true. It says and our name shall be forgotten in time, and no man shall have our works in remembrance. Well yeah, the ungodly, that's 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 gonna happen. The Lord's gonna erase your remembrance. But the works of the godly is gonna always be uh remembered. Alright? They're gonna leave a good name, a good legacy behind. It says, and our life shall pass away as the trace of a cloud and shall be dispersed as a mist 
that is driven away with the beams of the sun and overcome with the heat thereof. For our time is a very shadow that passeth away, and, out, and after our end there is no returning. See, that's what they believe. And we know according to the scriptures, you know, we um, we have to come back and play out our judgment. All right? They don't know that we must uh, live, you know, after, after you know, we get judged. Let's get uh, real quick. Let's get that in 2nd Ezra, uh, the 14th chapter. But see, it's 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 ungodly. It's it's bad to the wicked because if they were to come back, they know that they would have a price to pay. And we know that the Lord, you know, He gets you back every three or four generations, man. All right. Matter of fact, let's let's get that. Our numbers uh was at fourteen and fourteen because it, it it'll go well with the righteous, but it will not go well with the with the wicked. This is uh, numbers fourteen and verse uh, eighteen. It says, "The Lord is long suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty." Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. All right. And, you know, if you did some wickedness, your father is not going to uh, suffer for what you did. You're going to suffer for your own sin. So how, how is that going to uh, play out? He's going to get you when you come back, your third or fourth generation. Reincarnated. All right, so when you go here, Second Ezra 14, it says, <clears throat> verse, 30, verse 34 says, Therefore, if it be so that you will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, you shall be kept alive, and after death, you shall obtain mercy. All right? For after death shall the judgment come, when we shall live again. And then shall the names of the righteous be manifest and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. Okay. And that's going to ultimately happen when the Lord comes back. Because the, the righteous are going to be uh, beamed up and, and delivered, saved. Their their names are written in the, in the book of life. But you're going to have the, the, the wicked amongst our people. All right. And their, their heart is going to convict them. They're going to know in that moment. All right. And they, it's going to be a lot of weeping, welling, and gnashing of teeth. So, so going back, you know, the ungodly, they really believe that there is no returning. So going back, it says, uh, it says, for our time is a, is a very shadow that passeth away, and after our end there is no returning, for it is fast sealed, so that no man cometh again. Come on, therefore, and let us enjoy the good things that are present, and let us speedily use the creatures like as in youth. Let us fill ourselves with costly wine and ointments. You know, basically, let, let's, let's live our best life, right? And let no flower of the spring pass by us. Let us crown ourselves with rosebuds before they be withered. Let none of us go without his part of our voluptuousness. Let us leave tokens of our joyfulness in every place, for this is our portion, and our lot is this. All right? <clears throat> and that's how they live in the earth. You see? But, uh, you know, death is actually a good thing. It's just, it's not good to the, the ungodly. Uh, so rock 40. <clears throat> yeah, so rock 40 in verse uh, 8. I'll start at. Um, I'll start at 1. It says great travail is created for every man and a heavy yoke is upon the sons of Adam from the day that they go out of their mother's womb. 
till the day that they return to the mother of all things. All right? Yeah, you, you're dealing with a heavy yoke, man. You got to work every day. You got to suffer evil. You know, to, to understand, you know, the door of uh, good and evil. You know, it, it's it's a, um, it's a battle. It says, their imagination of things to come and the day of death trouble their thoughts and cause fear of heart. See? And that's, you know, that's, you know, to every to, to everybody that that don't understand. That's why this truth is, is, is such a comfort. You know, we're comforted by, you know, understanding the process of death. The scriptures, you know, gives it to us. That death is not really a bad thing. All right. Uh, let me jump down to. Uh, Matter of fact, I'll just keep reading. It says, from him that sitteth on a throne of glory unto him that is humbled in earth and ashes. From him that wear purple and a crown unto him that is clothed with a linen frock. Wrath and envy, trouble and unquietness, fear of death and anger and strife. And in a time of rest upon his bed, his, his night's sleep do change his knowledge. A little or nothing is his rest and afterward he is in his sleep as in a day of keep keeping watch troubled in the vision of his heart as if he were escaped out of a battle you know those thoughts you know scare scare the hell out of out of people it says when all is safe he awaketh and marveleth that the fear was nothing such things happen unto all flesh both man and beast and that is sevenfold more upon sinners and that dude take off, he, he was a sinner. The shit that he rapped about, it was all about sin. Death and bloodshed, strife and sword, calamities, famine, tribulation, and the scourge. These things are created for the wicked, and for their sakes came the flood. All right. And I think there's uh, one more. Let me go to the next chapter. So Rock 41 and uh, 2. And it says, O death, acceptable is thy sentence unto the needy and unto him whose strength faileth. So death is necessary even to those who, you know, who's getting old and they're losing their uh, faculties. You know, your rod don't get hard no more. You know, you're losing uh, your vision. You're getting weaker. You're getting uh, amnesia. You know, women getting uh, menopause. Like, who want to, you know, live to have to experience that? So a lot of older people, they be wanting to, to die. It says, that is now in the last age and is vexed with all things. And to him that despaireth and have lost patience, fear not the sentence of death. Remember them that have been before thee and that come after. For this is the sentence of the Lord over all flesh. All right, so we're all flesh, man. All right, the, the, the terrestrial. That's why, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's good news that, you know, when the Lord comes back, because he already got the victory over death, you know, we're going to, um, you know, we're going to inherit uh, incorruptible flesh. You know, we're going to be become immortal where we'll never be able to die again. Because, you know, sin will, will, will pretty much be uh, abolished. Okay? So, you know, we ain't got to worry or deal with death anymore or the fear of death. We're going to live forever. All Israelites are going to live forever. Okay? So let's... Uh, you know, I'll, I'll finish a little more of this and then I will close out. So I want y'all to listen to this. Uh, and maybe this will change your mind about what happened to Quavo. Because all y'all all y'all getting secondhand, mishand, uh, wrong information. So I want y'all to listen to this. Hold on. So what, 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 what they were shooting? Thousands? 
everybody in front of a thousand pieces, like 20 motherfuckers. I ain't worried about no motherfucker that beat me. They can't. How they gonna beat me? Well, let them rob me. That's the only thing they can win. Boy, you and I shoot. You and I shooting hard. Man, she ain't no motherfucker that gonna beat me bold and not in them. So I guess he just playing conversation. Okay, I guess with the manager after the shooting. So you know, so that that's pretty much it. Then you know, he, what he said was uh, it was actually you know truth truthful. And you can always uh, filter you know true sayings in the scriptures because the scriptures cover all things. All right, death is actually a a good thing, and even. Even in uh, Ecclesiastes, the day of a person's death is better than uh, the day of birth. Because at least once you die, you you know, you're released, man. You're free from, from the hell, especially if you're an Israelite, because you're under the curse anyway. You know, you, you, as soon as you come into this world, you curse. You come into the, you come into the earth curse and you leave the earth curse. But at least once you leave, you're at rest. All right, Job even said that, you know, why didn't I, why did I not die from the womb? You know, after all the hell he was catching, when Shatan was, uh, you know, battering him, but he never lost his integrity. He endured it, but, you know, in his, uh, in his misery, you know, he was saying these, these are things that he was saying, uh, Job three and, uh, verse, uh, Verse ten it says, "Because it shut, because it shut not up the doors of my mother's womb, nor hid sorrow from mine eyes. Why did I not from the womb? Why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why did the knees prevent me? Or why did the why the breasts that I should suck? For now should I have lain still and been quiet? I should have slept. Then had I been at rest." And we all are at rest in, in the spiritual realm, all right? Meaning your spirit is at rest and you're, you know, you're beholding the, the, the glory and majesty of the Lord and you're, and you're praising him, okay? You don't have any earthly uh, worries in, in the spiritual realm. It says, with kings and counselors of the earth which built desolate places for themselves or with princes that, hold, that had gold who filled their houses with silver or as a hidden untimely birth, I had not been as infants which never saw light. There the wicked cease from troubling, and there the weary be at rest. There the prisoners rest together. They hear not the voice of the oppressor. All right? Because your body is simply in the ground. Everybody's uh, body, you know, regardless of what you used to be when you were alive, Everybody, once they die, <laughs> they're going through the same exact process. Your body is in the grave, are decomposing, and your spirit is up there in the, in the heavens. All right, from from the from the least to the, from the small small to the great. It says the small and the great are there, and the servant is free from his master. Wherefore is light given to him that is in misery, and life unto the bitter in soul, which long for death. But it come not and dig for it more than for hid treasures. All right. So yeah, man. It's, it's, it's better to be in the spiritual realm at times. All right, let's get a uh, second Corinthians five. Uh, maybe we'll end it right here. Second Corinthians five and one. It says, for we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, meaning, you know, this flesh, your body, we have a building of the Mosai and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. So you have a celestial spiritual body that's already made for you in the heavens, you know, waiting your uh, transformation. All right. For in this, we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. If so, be that. Being clothed, we shall not be found naked. But we that are in this that are in this tabernacle do groan. All right, you'll constantly get burdened with with uh, you know demons, 
you know, all type of uh, lust that you got to fight, you know, infirmities, weaknesses, you know, sicknesses, illnesses, pain. It says being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that have wrought us for the self same thing, for the self same thing is the Most High Power who also have given us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord, but we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. All right, because ultimately, you know, once you know you die you're present with present with the lord and that's why um upon the resurrection of the day of the lord those who died in the lord they're going to be raised first and they're going to basically you know they're going to um be with the lord coming back and they're going to join those who are still alive and remaining so they're going to already be uh, present with the lord Okay, so right now that you know they're just uh sleeping. They're absent from the body while they while they sleep. And present with uh Yahweh while Yahweh shy, you know brothers and sisters that had died on, passed on. And then we are going to be present with the Lord on that day, and all of us we 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 were uh will be immortal because we're going to be changed and then you know in the kingdom we're going to have to bring back you know the two-thirds all right the charleston white he got the he gonna come back you know because we know he ain't gonna make it on this side all right that dude is too far gone even though he speaks some truths and these rappers that's dying off we got to bring a lot of them back But at least in the, in, in the spiritual realm, they're in their right mind. All right, beholding the, the majesty and power and glory of the Lord. All right. And, and, and if you ask any of them, even take off. Do you want to go back to earth? You want to go back to, you know, what you was doing? They all say hell to the no. I'd rather be where I'm at. All right. Even Apostle Paul explained that place as a place that he could it was unlawful for him to utter just to describe it. It was just, you know, you can't explain with words the type of, you know, glory and, and, and the, the beauty that, you know, the third heaven, you know, paradise. So you definitely wouldn't want to leave that. But anyway, you know, I'm going to end off with that. I'm going to give all praise, glory, and honor to you. I'm going to shy until the next lesson. Shalom.